What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of The Shy. This is season two, episode three. Um, girl, what is it called? Past due. Listen, this episode kind of pissed me off a little bit because Ronnie didn't got his ass out. All right, the escape artist lawyer. She done came through, bitch. I'm mad at her, and I ain't mad at her at the same time. Because this bitch did what she had to do, all right? She came through, she did her job, and she got this motherfucker out. But I'm mad that she got him out, okay? Listen, I have nothing against, you know, Ronnie. I just, if you do a crime, you have to pay the fucking time, okay? Pay the consequences for this crime that you have committed, all right? And basically, what wound up happening is, um... Y'all know little Kevin was supposed to be out here. We first of all, let's just go back. Okay. So we get a little flashback, some more from um um what's his name? Ronnie, when he first meets Jason, and I forgot to mention that at the end of last week's episode, we do see that somebody had one of the kids on the block. There was a group of them, they was playing, they threw something through the window, a ball hit the window, it broke, and so Ronnie came running after them, they running away, and then he wound up catching one of them. He was like, what's your name, you little badass? You know how he speak all slow and shit. You know, Ronnie just, <laughs> Ronnie just bit through some shit or whatever, but it was Jason, okay? And so, we seeing how Jason came into his life because if you remember season one, season one all started because Jason was a basketball player who had potential to go on to do better things. He was a good student. Um, and he wound up getting killed, caught up in some stuff that he shouldn't have been, you know, at the wrong place, wrong time. You know, he wasn't doing nothing bad. He was just at the wrong place, wrong time. And that is how Ronnie got into, you know, jail because he saw that Coogee had, um, Jason's necklace that he gave him or whatever. And Coogee wound up taking the necklace off the body and the shoes. Okay. That's what he did. He didn't do nothing else. Uh, and so because of this, Ronnie thought that Coogee was the one that killed Jason, which was not the truth. And so that's when he went on ahead and killed Coogee. And that's why he confessed later on in the season after he got shot by little Kevin with Reg gun that, you know, he was the one who killed Coogee. He did it and all this stuff. That's why he's in jail. So now we're seeing a little backstory about how, you know, Jason made Tracy and, um, I mean, um, Ronnie met Tracy and how, you know, he, it, it, the way they made it seem was like it was an instant connection. And, you know, we go from seeing last season, last scene from last week when they first met, he first met Jason to him cooking breakfast for him. And they talking about, you know, getting a good job so he can get them out of this apartment and they can all, you know, have all this good stuff and everything. And he was cooking up good shit like he really was the daddy who just got paid or whatever. I said eggs, bacon, ham, you know, waffles and shit. I used to eat that, but I can't eat none of that shit. Well, I can eat some eggs and all that stuff, but I can't. Uh, girls just be too much these days or whatever. You know, a bitch trying to look out for her figure. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> listen, listen, it's that weather, like... <laughs> Y'all just don't understand. It was like 70 some degrees today in Chicago, okay? After being a little cold for a couple of days, bitch. Yes, and then it's going to be like 75 degrees tomorrow. Bitch, please. Ashley wearing shorts, you know? Ashley is doing all of this shit tomorrow. You just ain't going to be able to say nothing, okay? But anyway, you know, um, <laughs> Ronnie just playing daddy, okay, all of a sudden. And then we get to this point where, you know, we see Ronnie um outside and he was doing something and jason he was fixing a fence or doing something you know after telling him you need to go on downstairs now this was he was um he was fixing something outside uh ethel was talking about how uh i see you with him all the time and what's up with this girl tracy and you know y'all real close and all this stuff and you know your mama you y'all must be real close for her to be able to let you watch her son and all this stuff because your mama w used to didn't trust nobody to watch you but me okay and it was like you know asking about planting some peonies on the, um you know some flowers or whatever because you see a neighbor across the street planting his flowers and you know ethel was cool with that she go back in the house little jason um you know was bouncing the ball playing basketball with himself ronnie had to go back in the house and do something he was getting something from the house or the shed in the back whichever one and next thing you know 
while you know little kids would be little kids little little niggas hating and all that shit little bullies in the neighborhood was over there um uh, messing with jason knocks his ball across the street to the neighbor's um flowers or whatever and of course he gets upset and he you know was coming at jason like i'm gonna beat your little ass and all this stuff you know back in the day the neighborhood the neighbors could whoop your ass too but you know um uh, you gotta be careful because this was around a time where uh, all of that kind of changed up a little bit. And it's like, don't you talk to my kid like that. I will fuck you up. If you got a problem with my child, you come tell me. So, at this point, um, Jason was like, I didn't mean to do it. It's an accident. You know, I'm just improvising or whatever. So, Ronnie comes out there and was like, get your hand off my son. I'll fuck you up and all this stuff. And woo, woo, woo. And um, he grabbed Jason. I said, first of all, son. <laughs> Since when? But okay, <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so he grabbed it on Jason, and he was like, "Stop! You're hurting me! You're hurting me!" And he was like, "Let me go! You're not my dad!" You know, for some reason, a part of me has always wanted a stepdaddy, so I could tell him that. It's like my mama knew not to bring her little niggas around us because she knew we was going to act up. Like, bitch, she just knew it. But anyway, um, she left. Next thing you know, Tracy get word about what happened. And um, we see before she confronts him about it, Ethel was talking to him. And he's going through one of his phases where he's just um, tunnel vision. And, and, and he's focused on this neighbor across the street. And he has an imaginary rifle in his hand. And he's, you know, right down talking about all the statistics of what the rifle can do and it can do 800 bullets and 800 rounds a minute and he can do this and he can do that and he can go 330 um miles per hour and all this stuff and i was like oh you need to go talk to somebody because ronnie he, he he got ptsd plus he keep on hearing that ringing or whatever and then ethel comes in like you've been at this um you've been at this uh window for a while you need to do something about uh get you some help or whatever do something and he was like she said here go your disability check he said i ain't oh no i'm not disabled and he she's like girl okay you do what you gotta do i thought you was gonna get a job and all that stuff but what i need your ass to do is go down there downtown and pay the goddamn water bill he looked at that check and balled it up i said boy but you ain't ain't nothing wrong with you right okay so at this point you know ronnie going through his issues he get confronted by tracy was like you can't be putting your hands on my son like that you know he told me what you did and all that stuff i can't be scared of you and he can't be scared of you maybe we need to buy you know you said you was gonna do this and you said you was gonna get this job and all this stuff what you talking about you know I don't see nothing happening. Baby, it's not my fault. I got to wait for them to talk to me. You know, which is true. But you can tell that Ronnie ain't really been out here trying to look for no job, okay? And so at this point, Tracy was over it, over it and done with it. And was like, you know what? I'm going to have to back off this a little bit too soon for me. It's a little bit too much, okay? It's a little bit too much, all right? And so at this point, we see Ronnie going out to the store. And this is where his alcoholism really started ramping up. Uh, and it's probably showing where it started to become a problem. And it shows that corner store where he goes each and every time to get his liquor. Okay. And then we go back to the present. <laughs> And we see little Kevin and his mom going to the courthouse, getting ready to do his little testimony. And we see this man come up to them, basically trying to make it seem as if he's a part of this organization. You know, seeing how courageous, uh, you know, Kevin is for a child um, to come forward and to, you know, speak on a subject or whatever and, and testify and how dangerous it is too. And so the mama was talking to him. So the mamas talked to him and all this stuff. Next thing you know... Um, Kevin mama was like, we ain't doing this. We finna go. Mind you, I'm sitting here like, who the fuck is this? Like, this just don't seem right. Um, what's going on? What did he say? Girl, he went back and sat next to the escape artist lawyer. I said, this bitch, this bitch. And she slid him some money and said, thank you. And she got the fuck up. 
I said, you know what? <laughs> bitch, you's a shysty, shady bitch. Okay, a part of me is like, go ahead, sister girl, but you're doing this to black folks. So another part of me is like, bitch, you know damn well. That's fucked up. But, you know, she went and talked to Ronnie. They, You got Detective Cruz looking at the tape, the confession, and you got these people coming over there talking to him, looking at the confession, and was like, you went on ahead and you let him confess to something while he was drunk as shit. Okay, his his alcohol levels was twice the limit. Plus, he had um um drugs in his system and all this shit. And you let him confess. Why didn't you just let him dry out first? I was like, you better hope this shit don't come back on our ass. Then we see a um you know um the escape artist sit down with um you know Ronnie, tell him what's up. And um, he was like, thank you. I'm so glad I got you in my court. And she was like, no, bitch, hold on, hold on. You got this game fucked up, okay? I'm a defense lawyer. You really think I'm in your corner? I'm not in your corner. I don't fuck with... You really think I want to defend murderers and I like murderers and white supremacists and see them getting off and all this shit? Hell no, but bitch, I'm trying to make partner. I was like, on the one hand, girl, you disgust the fuck out of me. On the other hand, at least you was real about that shit, bitch. She said, I have a goal and I'm going for that shit. And bitch, that goal is to make partner at the end of that goddamn rainbow. That's my pot of gold right there. I said, anyway, so she's sitting down there with the prosecutor and, 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 and uh, I guess the person that's representing the police and the judge or whatever. And they talking about this whole confession and then they throw up in there that Kevin shot, um, you know, uh, Ronnie in the stomach and all this shit. And it was like, is this true? Yes. Next thing you know, girl, Ronnie getting the fuck off. She told him, you getting another chance. Okay. Don't nobody really get off like this after, um, you know. Um, being accused of murder one, bitch, you, 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 you getting a second chance. You need to dry your ass out. Cause she told her when he came to visit her the first time, you stank like that toilet wine shit. You need to clean your ass up. Okay. Keep yourself clean. All right. You better do that shit. Bitch, Cruz had called Brandon trying to tell him what was up. No, Cruz had went over to the house. Uh, uh, tried to talk to Brandon, trying to talk to um their mother, and was like, no, she ain't even here, so, you know, she can't give a witness statement, a victim statement, and all that shit. Can you do it? No, bitch. I ain't finna do shit. What you need to do is you need to do your damn job, okay? How you finna let this man come out? He said what he said, and now you wanna let him come out? Girl, ain't nobody got time for this. He was over it, because Brandon was just having a, ha a, a hell of a day. Now, mind you, when Ronnie was getting out of jail, Cruz was in his feelings because Detective Tucson, you know, was asking him questions too when they was up there boxing and shit. I said, do y'all got chemistry too? What the fuck is going on? Tucson got chemistry with everybody. But anybody, um, anyway, you know, she was like, so you really did this to him? Like, wow, you took this confession while he was drunk and shit? Like, come on. He was like, whether he was drunk or sober, it don't matter. He did it and I, we both know that he did it. Girl, why he try to attack Ronnie after he was finna get ready to get released? It was like, you want me to tell my lawyer what you did? I said, at this point, Cruz, it's over. Get him on something else, okay? Because you fucked up. You fucked the game up. You did this. This is your fault. Moving on from that, um, I, he went past that liquor store. And at the end of the episode, I'm going to assume that he did not go into that liquor store. Moving on from that, let's just get to little Brandon. Brandon had a time in his life, okay, this episode... Um, he tried to park in front of Sonny's to, you know, do his little takeout stuff, little truck stuff, tacos and shit like that. And Sonny said, bitch, no. Okay. Emmy came out there trying to talk to him or whatever and be like, no, bro, you can't do this. I ain't trying to fight or whatever. And so at this point, he was like, fuck it. You win. Cause not today, bitch. Not today. Everybody has had one of those days where you wake up. And it just seems like everything is just either tumbling down and nothing is going right. And you just like, bitch, not the fuck today. And that was Brandon. He said, you know what? Fuck this shit. So he he moved up. And he was like, this is the only place that don't need to have a permit and all this shit. I said, Brandon, this is your fucking fault at this point. All right. Get your ass a fucking permit. Jerrica Ben said, bitch, get your ass a permit. Why are you dragging your feet? You are going to cause yourself to get your um truck and your business taken right from underneath you. You ain't going to be able to sweet talk your way out of it with a goddamn taco because it ain't going to be another fat boy that's going to come and put a boot on the truck. It's going to be somebody else that's going to come through who don't give a fuck, okay? You need to go ahead and get this permit. I know you're trying to get your money and all this shit. But baby, go get your permit. You 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 making me nervous, okay? You making me nervous. Moving on. Uh, 
he was in the process. He was talking to his um stepdaddy and basically found out that his mama is not coming back to Chicago. She, you know, too many memories or whatever that happened. And the daddy was like, bitch, I ain't moving nowhere. Okay, I'm staying the fuck right here. And then that's when he got that um visit from Detective Cruz. So he goes back and he's doing a little um, you know, um his truck with his friend or whatever, talking about, you know, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I take two steps forward and then two steps back happen because then the burner one working. And so uh, at one point, nope, nope, not that part. I, I, I sped up. He get a call while he was in the midst of doing the um, work and giving people their tacos and stuff while he was in the midst of complaining and shit. And all of a sudden, he was like, yeah, bro, we could do that. We could do that. He said, when we finish this shit, we got another place to go. And he was like, where you going? Bitch, it was like the old school players ball up in there. <laughs> Ooh, I said, bitch. Am I looking at Martin with the player's ball? You know, I'm a player from the Himalayas. Like, bitch, like, you know, how does a pimp call? Bitch, where's my motherfucking money, how? Like, girl, I said, what did I just, um, you know, transport myself into? Because this is a lot that's going on right about now. Girl, he, somebody, a pimp dad, you know, man down, pimp down, hold down, all the same. And so, he was about to get, that's when the burner went out. He was going to use that money for, um, the truck to, um, uh, that they get from the gig to buy a new burner. He go talk to the dude. He said it was fifteen hundred. He was like fifteen hundred. You said eight fifty. He was like I said eight fifty before you brought like fifty million people up in here. Okay, you brought them in the whole goddamn city up in here. And he was like, okay, well here go the eight fifty. And then here go this. Gave him a pack of weed. And he was like, you can easily sell that and get seven hundred off the street for that. And he was like, okay, whatever. So he take it to his cousin, the weed head meditation, um, Zen dude. And when he was checking that week, he had me rolling. He said, you ain't going to give me the money? Cousin. <laughs> when he sat down in front of him, cousin. <laughs> you know, we Johnsons and all this stuff. But basically, he wanted, you know, he thought he was going to give him his half of the, um, give him, pay him back because he helped him get the truck. But, you know, he needed some other things to pay off on the truck. So he said, okay, I'm going to let you do that. And it was this, um, flyer to be into this cooking competition for food trucks and restaurants or whatever. But you have to be in good standing with your school and all this stuff. And he wasn't. But eventually, he did go down and talk to him because his cousin was like, your chakras and all that is all fucked up. But if you had the right idea and mind frame, you know that you would be able to win this shit. And so, you need to get that shit fixed. So, he did go down to the school. He did get in good favor with them. And they allowed him to be in the competition. So, that's good. And it's a $5,000 win. And so, that was that with that. Uh, I did, one thing that I did like was, Brandon was driving down the street. And, um, Kevin was coming from Aisha's house and he saw Brandon driving down the street and he raced down there to get to him. And they had that whole little moment that they had. Um, it was beautiful to me because we need to see more of this. Um, little boys having male role models, um, especially black boys, you know, positive male role models. And even though Brandon has lost a brother, he gained another little brother. Even if he don't see it or recognize it, he's gained another brother, a little brother that he can help mold and be a role model to in Lil' Kevin. You know, they're talking about the fact that Ronnie got uh, free. They go out, they play, uh, or they might be, he might be getting free. And they didn't know at this time. Um, they going out playing football with each other, playing catch, you know, having fun. And, you know, he's reading him his letter that he was going to write to the judge or whatever to on behalf of keeping Ronnie in jail, you know, and tearing up. And, you know, they're being there for each other, dropping him off at his house. I thought that was beautiful. I thought that was a beautiful ass scene. That's probably one of the best scene of the episode to me. Um, speaking of little Kevin. <laughs> Kevin is at school, and they talking about, you know, selling these candy or whatever so they can get a trip to the Shed Aquarium and then get this TV. Papa was like, because Papa is dead last, right? And uh, he was like, I need to get this flat screen TV because they ain't even got, we only got one good TV in the house, and I ain't trying to be, you know, struggling to get all this and all that stuff, whatever. And then Kevin was like, you know, 
First of all, the Shed Aquarium is weak as fuck. I said, oh, no. Let me tell you something. We give out passes, free passes to go to the Shed Aquarium out here to um, in Chicago. That's one of the, the kids' museum passports. That's one of the most popular passes out here. And they always just snatch them up, snatch them up. They be on it to go every day of the fucking week. No matter what season it is, they be the main pass that's always out. Duh. Fuck that, bitch. I ain't been to the Shed Aquarium in a long time. And I can't go because I ain't finna pay all that goddamn money to go to it. I'm waiting for a pass to pop up. Every time it comes through, somebody want it. I'm like, God damn it, bitch. Bitch, but whatever. Um, The teacher was like, you know, Kevin was like, he turned it to Left Eye in a minute when he was like, remember when Left Eye was on VH1 behind the music and she was telling us how they became broke, uh, bankrupt and she was like, all right, people, let's do our math. Okay, let's do the math. And, you know, you got to take this and you take that. And, you know, times that, that gives you this and that gives you that. Kevin was like, a TV costs like $400. And then you got to sell 360 this just to get this much. And then you got to sell that. And then you got to multiply that by this and all of this stuff. And woo, woo, woo. I said, well, damn, look, Kevin, you smart. You smart. The teacher overheard and was like, listen, so since you know all this stuff and since you want to call shit weak, you need to sell these um, 24 candy bars. Uh, and get uh two hundred and forty dollars or whatever for it, and we'll see what's going on. And he was like, "Damn, bitch, you know, Papa, like, what am I gonna do and all this stuff? What scheme we gotta do? Because the last time we did something, you messed up my asthma. Talking about the Ronnie situation, is he really scared? Papa got ailments for every goddamn thing. Okay, asthma, high blood pressure, diabetes, you know, stress." PTSD, like he got an ailment for everything, okay? He got a reasoning for everything and an ailment for it to back it up, bitch. He is hilarious to me. I can't wait till I get to the episode when he's dressed up as Biggie Smalls. I love that little boy. But, um, you know, he was out there trying to sell the candy and dude took the candy and threw that shit down. I said, you a rude bitch. You is a rude bitch. You could have just kept on walking, okay? Niggas in Chicago rude like that. I ain't even gonna lie, okay? We some rude bitches sometimes. Anyway, moving on, um, <laughs> Papa finna pass the fuck out because he hungry, okay? He was on the Daniel slash Beyonce fast, okay? The little boy wasn't eating nothing, okay? But, yeah, like that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, this tastes like nothing. What you eating on, girl air? Vegan air at that. Zero calories, zero tasting, zero feeling, bitch, okay? But, um... You know, you just got to think about it and you'll get full. Like, this ain't no Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, bitch. Um, Gobstoppers and stuff like that. You know, so he was like, um, Dane was like, uh, Daniel. <laughs> Look, um, Kevin was like, oh, okay, bitch. You said your daddy, you know, you this y'all last day to fast. It was like, hell yeah, at the end of the day, we done. It was like, okay. So they wind up going to the church. The daddy is up there preaching. And he was like, he be he about to be finished. Because as soon as he throw them crackers up, that's when the, um, the sermon is about to be over with. Girl, as soon as they was done, bitch, they came out there. And they just started taking the food, taking the food, taking the um candy. I said, that's how you fucking do it. Go where the need is wanted, bitch. All right? <laughs> Supply and motherfucking demand. Economics. And so they got their little stuff. That was cute. Um, it was a sad part for me to see the whole scene with Kevin and Myesha, and we see that they're going to have a little connection, and Kevin is, you know, he tried to play hard, but he's sensitive at heart, meaning he, he's understanding, and he has a heart. Uh, you know, he could talk shit about Myesha, but you could tell he still got a little bit of feelings for her, and he feels for her situation, knowing that she has to be at home, she can't go to school, because her mother wants her there to watch all them damn kids. And I can't stress enough, I just feel the type of way when parents, when people keep having kids and kids and kids, and you don't have no way of taking care of them, and I mean, it's okay, I see that she's trying to take care of them by working multiple jobs or doing whatever it is that she's trying to do to keep a roof over their head, because this is a, they had moved at one point, you know, she's not going, but when it comes to the fact that your oldest or your eldest children have to, you know, drop out of school or stop going to school for a minute just to take care of their younger siblings, that's not their responsibility. You are the parent. You're supposed to be doing that. And, and, and I get it, but this is what happens in the hood and in a lot of places all the time. A lot of different places where, you know, kids have to drop out of school or have to stop going to school for a long period of time or a certain period of time. And, and, and take care of the household while the mom and the dad, because the daddy ain't there, while the mom doing what they doing or whatever. Um, and and then that caused the child to be 
falling back in school. So now Kevin is bringing her homework, even though she um threatened him and all that shit. <laughs> but, you know, he, he sees what's going on and he feels a way. And so that kind of, that scene kind of broke my heart. Also, what broke my heart was when I saw Miss Ethel, because Tucson was trying to talk to her about who did it, bitch. Miss Ethel was all types of fucked up. She said, who was it? She was like, um, he was tall. He said he was a vet. Um, he was something ugly. I said, damn it, bitch. Miss Ethel is fucked up, and she's still out here being hilarious, being her same self. But, um, you know, Tucson went around the neighborhood trying to figure out what's going on, and people wasn't talking, except for this old lady, older lady, Miss Gladys, who, you know, um was giving her input about everything that happened. She said, bitch, I ain't scared of none of these motherfuckers. I've been here for 46 years and you ain't finna scare me off this plot. All right. She told them about, told her about this white lady that's going around getting people out their house and, um, you know, shit like that. So they finna look into her because I feel like what they're doing is a scam. Okay. I really do feel like they're scamming these older people out their homes. That's what it feel like. Um, moving on. Who else? Uh, Cruz had, printed out Reggie picture because Tucson has showed Reggie and, um, you know, that picture of Reggie and, um, Brandon together and, you know, printed out everybody from the 63rd street mob or whatever that be working with him, the tops up. And so she showed Miss Ethel and, and Gladys and they said, no, it wasn't him. It was somebody tall and all this stuff. They don't see them and all that shit. So now we got them on the lookout. All right. Moving on from there. Let's just get to Emmett. Emmett starts to show off, complain to Sonny about being at his house, at his daddy's house, and how all the food just be gone, and, you know, the mama goes, the stepmama go out and get some food on Monday, on Saturday, and by Tuesday, everything gone, and he just got a tribe of people and all this stuff. I said, how dare you come into his home and complain about it when you ain't supposed, go get you a job yourself. Girl, boy, you, you, you're doing a lot. You're doing a lot, because there is nothing stopping you from getting a different job. You are comfortable in what you're doing and you're so used to people providing for you that you don't want to provide for yourself to the maximum and use your maximum potential okay and then at this point when Brandon truck come up there um Sonny has a stroke and see at least at this point you know I said the good thing about Emmy was at least he was paying attention somewhat to his mama and the job that she do that he was able to recognize the sign of the stroke because he was he passed out a little bit and then he was like Sonny I need you to smile and he could barely smile his side one side of his face was drooping and he was like he had a stroke so Sonny's daughter comes in and she want to close the place down and he was like no let me manage it let me do what I got to do with it or whatever and so she was like I don't even know how to do nothing with no chicken because I'm big and I said bitch you grew up in the house with chicken you knew what to do with it you you didn't just become vegan overnight girl stop playing but okay you know um moving on from that she let this boy manage and I'm thinking he gonna do a good job girl girl the employees acting up, attitude out the ass to the customers, burning up the goddamn chicken, okay? Only got chicken, don't got nothing else on file. I said, what the hell? Tiffany bring her little hoe ass up in there. Let me tell you something. Tiffany had me fucked up, okay? On the one hand, daddy is his son, and he should be willing to provide for him. But you the one, like he said, you the one that wanted this court order child support, so I paid that shit, and they get the money out of that goddamn child support and go get his uh, teeth fixed. Bitch, it's only three teeth up in his mouth so what the fuck you talking about okay and on the other hand i was like that is your son you should be willing to do whatever you gotta do you know i know he was just putting on because um you know people was around he trying to make him feel like he a little boss man and when he said i ain't even buy no shoes in three weeks she was like and so the fuck what <laughs> Bitch, when she left out and then he, he texted her saying, I'm going to give you some money. I'm going to give you half of it. She said, fuck you. I was like, oh, okay. That would have just been it for me. You know what I'm saying? But he went over there, gave him, you know, his tips, whatever. I said, you went and got some tips from the service that y'all did in Sonny's. Y'all fucking that place up. And then we see on next week's episode, he going to have a grease fire up in that bitch. I said, y'all going to burn Sonny's place down to the ground. God damn. God damn. Moving on. 
she opened up the door and she was like, thank you or whatever. You want to come in? And then he was like, sure, whatever. He thinking that the baby going to be there. Where my son at? But he over at my mama's house because on Wednesday nights, uh, um, you know, she take him on Tuesdays or whatever. And, you know, um, Wednesdays is this or whatever. I want him. I don't want to get him out of his routine or whatever. Why the fuck you do this? And you know, I want to see my son and all this shit. They get into it and all this stuff. And next thing you know, she punched or she slapped him. Him, and they just going back and forth as soon as I said no do not do what I think you about to do bitch it went from that to Jody and Yvette all over again I said look at this Chicago version of baby boy he fucked that girl I said you know I knew what she wanted I knew what she wanted and he could have knew what she wanted too you couldn't tell me okay she wanted him to fuck her and he wanted to fuck her too and all that shit next thing you know he on the couch and I said I'll be good, goddamn. Given that it's Emmett, I'm pretty sure that he is raw dogging her. And given that it's Tiffany, I'm pretty sure that she wants it. Girl, that was um the shy. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it, and I will see y'all later. That boy won't never learn. Never learn.